Yeah, look, look at look, look at where this Tesla found support. There was a guy in on Twitter that says he did, didn't understand the logic of the mo of moving averages. He thought you know technical analysis is crap. I told him study thousand of the biggest stock market winners over the pa last hundred years, and you'll understand why I use moving averages. And you know who cares about the logic, really? If there's something that you will, you know, works over and over again, but you don't understand why it works, you don't, you, you know, you don't pass on that. You use it, right? Because if you don't understand it, maybe no one else understands it either, right? But who cares? You go to the grocery store or you go buy a yacht. No one is going to ask you, hey, did you understand why you bought the stock you made all this money on? No one is going to ask you that. You have the money in the bank. No one is going to ask you if you understood the logic behind the trade. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, trying to understand everything. If you know something works, you shouldn't overthink. You should just go with it. You don't need to understand why this or that is going up. The fact that it's going up and acting technically well. And especially if it's a leader, right? Because you have to understand like a lot of times in the markets, markets and stocks, they many times fall, uh, you know, move before the fundamentals become obvious. Especially when it like these cyclical type of stocks. You know, when the, when, when the cyclical type of names when they start getting good earnings, they could already be up for, you know, 500% a year later, right? And then you get the good earnings. Do I look at any sentiment indicators? Nah, not really. Nah, no, not really. The problem with sentiment indicators is during the best periods, like during the free money periods, when, when, when they're, when, you know, the, 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 during the times where most of the money is made as a swing trader or a position trader, sentiment indicators and overbought, oversold indicators, they're gonna show excessively bullish sentiment versus like excessively overbought readings. So they kind of, they, they, they do work, but they could completely useless when you when you when there is the most amount of money to be made that's the problem look at last year and early this year you know if you followed these sentiment indicators you would have missed out on life changing money that's the problem but they do work sometimes that's why people use them Dun, 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 dun. And there's a guy on Twitter that I follow. Um, actually, there's two guys. I don't know which one of them. Is it the next big trader, Kevin Martyr? But one of them said, you know, he stopped using uh, sentiment indicators in the 90s because he saw the same thing. When the life-changing money is to be made, the sentiment indicators will all show like uh, excessively bullish sentiment for months, for months on end. And if you sell or get out or out of the market or whatever, go, you know, take a step back during those periods, you're gonna miss out on life-changing money. And remember, you know, on these st stuff like Lucid, you know. Remember the trail if you're in the, this thing. Re remember to you know, don't get too excited. Yeah, like this thing could go up another fifty percent. Don't don't just randomly sell everything into strength. It's better to sell a partial too little bit too late than too early. Better to sell, you know, 10% too late than 100% too early. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I'm not saying it it can it, it will double, but it can. Like lo, like the volume is just insane. This whole sector is it is the leading sector of the market. And the volume is just insane. Like I haven't seen this type of volume since AMC back in May June. Look at how similar Lucid looks to AMC or, uh, you know, look at this thing. If you sold AMC here, like, oh, I got a nice move. I got a 50% move in a couple of weeks. Well, guess what? You, you would have gotten another 300% in the next week. I'm not saying Lucid is gonna do anything like it. Probably not, but you know, it, it could realistically do, you know, much bigger move than this. So don't forget to trail. EMDP. Oh yeah. Yeah, it had several flags on the way up. I think someone mentioned it here, but I, I kind of dissed it because I thought it was already getting a little bit extended, but <laughs> yeah, great job. Great job. This is why you need to build your own conviction and not uh, trust, you know, rely on someone else. So important. You need to build your own conviction in these setups. So you don't, you don't want to, you know, get caught with your pants down on, on, on heavy margin. You want to be proactive. Anything that doesn't act right with the indices, you know, straight up, it needs to be sized down, it needs to go. Or you need to move your stops aggressively. But if you're not using any margin, you know, don't worry about it. Just use your trailing stops and... And look at this TTD, it's breaking a, you know, a long, like, year long range here. And it's been building higher lows for like a year. You know, EPs are... Not always, but many times these EPs are where, um, you know, a new trend starts. And today is a potential for that. It's already traded twice the average volume. It traded, like if you look at it, the first five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever, 20 minutes, it traded the whole uh, uh, you know, it traded average daily volume before it broke out on the five minute chart. So the volume was on the table before, uh, before the breakout, before the opening range highs. So these are the type of EPs you're looking for, you know, preferably, you know, not always, but many times, you know, stocks that are already in an existing uptrend. Over the past, you know, six months or a year or two years or whatever. And then preferably they have higher lows for many months. And then they kind of break out of those big ranges on an EP. Or it could be earnings or, or some kind of other EP. Those are my favorite ones where the technicals and fundamentals converge. Those are the best. Stocks moving out of a base, just they said have earnings, happens all the time in a good market, all, all the time. The float is 1.7 billion on PLTR. And that is, is that relevant in any way? Well, Tesla has a float of uh, almost a billion and it has a market cap of, you know, gazillion trillion. And it, it's up 50% in three weeks. But guys, you have to understand what's relevant data and what's irrelevant data. 